Thank you very much for joining us on the Modern Job Search Checklist. Uh, we stream every week to LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, though Twitter's going to be kind of questionable for the next few weeks because uh, there's a transition going on with them and Periscope. So it'll eventually straighten itself out, but we are live everywhere else. Thank you very much for joining us. We stream every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock Central. So if this is your first time, welcome. If you're coming back, we thank you very much for being loyal fans of this show. Uh, Damien, we're coming close to a year of doing this. Um, yeah. On Job Seeker Nation, we celebrated uh, our we actually our first anniversary is officially tomorrow. Now, not that we're going to have anything real special but uh, we've been doing this year so we have about 40 episodes in the can we have about 30 something on the youtube channel and by the way do you know we have a youtube channel the modern jobs are checklist you can check us out there how are you damien i'm doing fine thanks i um i always look forward to uh to friday it's uh, the the highlight of my week because we have the opportunity to to reach out and um and meet folks online in ways that uh, that we never uh, could any other way. And mm -hmm. you know, Mark and I always like to say that we are here for you and that uh, there have been many wonderful times in the middle of the show that uh, someone who is watching has uh, shot in a, a question or, or a burning issue. And we have literally been able to uh, change the show and build it around the needs of our audience. And, and Mark, I think that's really one of the reasons why we have been so successful across the many months because mm -hmm. of the fact that people understand that. And um, through the months, I mean, not only has it been national, but it's been uh, international drawing people from um, all sorts of uh, English speaking segments of uh, of the world and um, it is as always just both uh, exciting and a privilege to to be here with you every week thank you well thank you and it is a privilege and though i laugh i try not to make a big deal that it's international because for years people will say well my international podcast or my <laughs> international live stream it's like, dude, everything is international once you get on these platforms. <laughs> right. it, really, it, really, it really isn't that big of a deal, right? No. So I, I think people, you know, I don't, I try not to pump things up as big as they need to be, um, you know, but having said that, yes, everybody has an opportunity to reach across the seas and across the waters to reach somebody else and touch their lives. And uh, glad that we've been able to do that. Uh, today's kind of a loose show, though we have a couple of topics on, on tap, but the show is really built around our job seekers, right? So we mm -hmm. want to be sure that you comment in chat, say hi to us in the chat. Whether it's one or whether it's 20, we want to be sure that we're meeting the needs of job seekers. That's why we're here. Otherwise, we're just creating a video. So uh, let's get that to some of the topics. And uh, uh, again, this is a loose show. Uh, we will stop what we're doing to discuss about what you're doing in your job search. So uh, help us out. Uh, say hi to us. Tell us what your conundrum is in your job search or in your career. And we will really answer about any career question. Although if it's a private matter, you could just follow us and hit us up in the DMs. So let's go ahead and get started. In this particular atmosphere and climate and this environment, you know, we are not post-COVID yet. Uh, just to remind folks, we don't think that we are. There's some people who have been writing that we kind of are, like this is coming to an end. And it just keeps going on and on and on as ICU, uh, ICUs all over the place are filling up still and uh, running into crisis. We've got a lot of things going on in this world as far as people's health and where they are and where they're living and their livelihoods are being interrupted and disrupted every day. So when it comes to the working world, Damien, um, 
What has surprised you most about workers since COVID began up to this point? And what has surprised you most about employers? And you can reach for any angle that you want. I didn't outline anything particular, but I did ask this question on job seeking nation. I thought this would be a good question for us to discuss here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, first, uh, pre-COVID, ninety uh, percent of people said work from home, can't do it, not tolerated. Uh, you know, your place is in the office period. And and now uh, virtually all, except for, you know, critical care workers, those that keep us alive, mm-hmm. uh, uh, most all have adopted to working from home. And that's done several things. Uh, one, it's forced all of us to learn new technology, which mm-hmm. when you're in the job market or, or may someday be is very important so that you continue to learn and Keep your uh, your your toolbox of transferable skills uh, up, ready, oiled, and shiny. Mm-hmm. But it has also uh, enabled people to take a hard look uh, at their life because they were completely thrown. We all were, and all of a sudden, we're at home with family for months, uh, mm-hmm. years now. And all of a sudden said, hey, you know what? I like this. And I don't have to work for my abusive boss any longer. And so to me, and I I know this is a fancy catchphrase that you hear all about, but it's led in large part to the great resignation where people are saying uh, enough is enough. There are greener pastures out there and uh, I'm going to start looking. Um, those that have gone about it a little more strategically are sitting back, staying in their jobs and doing, you know, what you and I would call, you know, a low key or undercover uh, job search. Some of the younger and braver among us with uh, all of the um, money that was flowing in in terms of stimulus. I mean, I know several people who just chucked it and and said, okay, you know, I got the stimulus money. I have unemployment unemployment benefits. It's it's now or never. Uh, And so when you kind of put that all together, you have a lot of turbulence in the workforce and you do have a lot of people that move around. However, it is the the top 10% of the workforce that are always prepared, always have a resume ready, are always utilizing LinkedIn and social media correctly, building and expanding their network and are continually learning. Those are the folks that have the luxury of deciding rather easily where they want to go to Next, there is uh, lots of struggle for many others who know they have to leave, but now are facing a a long-term job search for a uh, for the first time in a long time. Which is why, you know, you and and Jack Kelly and and so many others are are so very valuable. So that's kind of question one. Uh, question number two about uh, employers. I think that uh, employers were um, honestly caught flat-footed. Uh, one, that this paradigm of you can't work at home, well, if you didn't adapt, you were on a business. So that got taken care of. Even with those awkward Zoom meetings, like what I used to lead, uh, but, but they found a way. But see, here's the thing, in many cases, uh, supervisors, managers, and others, their their paradigm about work really hadn't changed. And they tried to manage uh, an open workforce. And what I mean by that is a workforce that now was working in their home environment, and they weren't being forced to come into an office. And uh, And I can only speak from what I've heard, from what people have told me, at 
professionals in transition, the, the support group that I run, that scare tactics that used to be employed uh, started to fall on deaf ears, which then acted like a, a stimulus in terms of people saying, nope, not going to do it. I'm going to find another way. Point being is that management has had to adapt both in terms of the way that they treat their people. And perhaps the most exciting thing is you're starting to see above the minimum wage being offered just to be competitive. And then the, the final thing is uh, companies are hurting. Companies are, are having a hard time finding qualified people. They're going to show up do their job and then a little bit more and play well in the corporate sandbox. And so if you are that type of person, then making a transition from a job that you may not particularly enjoy and go towards a job that offers more money and a greater future has actually become easier. And those are kind of the, the, the top three things that, that I've learned uh, as this continues to just drag on and on. And oh, by the way, we haven't even started with flu season yet, right? Yeah, those are becoming very interesting. And I just recently, I don't share medical information. I don't mind sharing at this particular point. I already got my flu shot. But, you know, I think something, let's ride on something here for a second, because you inferred something. Uh, I think it's a, a point that we haven't talked about yet. And for the fact that on both sides, we communicate so differently. Uh, about our needs and about our wants that there we keep, you know, it seems like it's sort of like if you and I start talking over each other and just to see that who's the loudest and who's going to, you know, get the last point in. I feel like there's this battle between employers and, and employees that they're trying to talk over each other. One says, you know, that, you know, come back in the office. And the other one says, well, you know, you make it hybrid. And some is, and then there's that partition that says, no, I don't want to go in three times a week. I want to be home all the time. And you got to, you got to ask still the big question is, why can't people work the way they feel like they're the most productive? And most employers don't answer that question. Instead, they say we have control. And, you know, it's sort of like, you know, it's almost like a Jedi mind trick in the sense that, so you, you know, you're, you rather work in the office and people know and stop trying to pull that Jedi mind trick. But I think there's that commu that communication aspect where people just continue to just talk, you know, be t if there were just two people, they're just talking loud and, and they're both trying to make their points, but in essence, it's like, well, who has the leverage right now? Uh, and not particularly when people say this is a job seeker controlled market. It is a job seekers market. But right now, this is a job seekers has the one leverage is that they know that that the employers can't function if they don't have them. And it's kind of, it's a little bit different than saying it's a job seekers market because still we're not yet controlling the, the salary and the compensation part. That's the one part we definitely don't have control. And, right. but at the same time, we can kind of hold them hostage for a little bit, but that will only last so long. So for you, uh, in, in your view, um, what part of this dance seems to be um, it, it seems to be the most vital or it seems to be the most robust at this particular time? Um, Mark, I want to answer that from from two different uh, angles. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, if you are a valued team, player and uh, you do a great job and you get along with folks, mm -hmm. uh, you have 
now more latitude, I think, than, than you have ever had before, regardless of whether you work at home, you do hybrid, or you're held hostage in an office. Mm -hmm. But knowing that, that this is the wrong term, but weaponizes you from the standpoint of you being able to securely find uh, additional work quietly mm -hmm. because right. you're so well thought of. But mm -hmm. the other thing is, um, and, and you and I have talked about this, so I, I don't have to go into a, a, a big deal about it, mm -hmm. but these ridiculous amount of interviews that candidates are being put through um, as as you have written about, uh, mm -hmm. to me is just unconscionable, and it is burning good people out on both ends. And as a result, the best candidates are not the ones that are going to work for particular companies because they go on to the next best opportunity. And um, I don't know whether it is well. What I personally think it is is I think it's this morbid fear of hiring the wrong person. And so rather than do that, they try mm -hmm. to make a decision by uh, a community or by committee. And as a result, no decision makes. And so then the thought is, okay, well, let's interview them again. And uh, it slows the process down. It's clunky. It's very stressful on those who are out there looking for jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for parsing that. Um, I'm going to take a stab at this question and I'm going to answer it a little bit differently than I did Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, I said, what surprised you about employers really wasn't a particular surprise. And the, the fact that, you know, they turned out to be liars. Uh, first it was <laughs> really, they turned out to be liars. They said, no, we can't work. We, 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 there's no way that we can make it happen. Then when there was a mandate to uh, be home, then it was, oh, well, we have this way of we, people will have to use their Wi-Fi until we're able to do X, Y, and Z. A lot of those questions still weren't answered. And to me, if I were to say that what, uh, what a surprise about employers really isn't a surprise that they're also fickle uh, and they change their minds. And it's almost like, you know, between employers and employees, the jockeying for position uh, to, to, to see who can, who can ride the horse with the most turbulence. Um, I, I just really feel like, you know, all of that to say, is that people just uh, overall are waiting for the next shoe to drop whenever employees make a decision. You know, uh, the big companies kind of control uh, what everybody else would do. And when, especially remember when Microsoft said, we're not going to return to the office until 20, 21 at first and i remember this was 2020 and and here we are or was that or something or another it was 2020 and 21 21 uh yeah we're kind of returning to the office but we're kind of not returning to the office because there's a new variant and there's some health concerns so people said hold up now wait till january then we'll return into the now i understand you got to change your mind you change your strategy but it wasn't until Microsoft and some of the bigger companies at least had projected and gave time to say that, yes, we can work for Twitter and LinkedIn said we can work for you guys could do this for a long time. You can do this forever if you want. And so everybody else is kind of rethinking, you know, that maybe it is possible. Maybe I should make this kind of workplace. So I think the other thing that we found out employers is that they're copycats. Um, it takes one, it takes one big dog to get the other puppies in line. So, you know, <laughs> really, I, I, I really do think that. Uh, when, uh, the one thing that that uh, surprised me about employees, about workers, um, and I said this on Wednesday, that, you know, the resilience that uh, they're able to and we're able to make it through anything and we're able to change and adjust. But we'll also, we, you know, we have some fight in us, despite what kind, no matter what kind of 
uh, uh, pandemic it is. Um, you know, anything short but aliens coming to Earth and taking our bodies, we've been able to get past all that. And that's what COVID kind of was, that alien movie that that replaced themselves with the zombie uh, in some ways. And some people got caught and there's many others who didn't. And, you know, I think that people are also willing to uh, resist whatever the company line is uh, as far as at least the COVID and pandemic and being able to stay home that they can walk away from their jobs and they don't have to accept a bad deal uh, or one-sided deal when an employer offers, offers it. So, you know, I think it's going to make for interesting future that uh, people don't have to do everything an employer tells you to do in in two seconds that they're able to uh, have some resistance and 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 you know stand their ground mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep no absolutely I mean there there has been at last uh, a, a shift in the uh, in the the power struggle mm-hmm. and um, I think you and I may have talked about this on one of the shows. But a, a, a phenomena that just amazes me, and OPS, the those that are doing this, must have an mm-hmm. incredible amount of uh, energy. But there are lots of people out there. There's a site called overemployed.com mm-hmm. where people literally are. You having, did talk about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, two full time jobs, uh, and neither employee employer uh, knows about it. And uh, I only bring this up, uh, pointing towards, uh, pointing back rather towards what what you were mentioning, uh, in that uh, employees now because of technology um, have the power to be able to do things like this mm-hmm. that pre pandemic would have been absolutely unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think we were head all, uh, headed that way. I think we, uh, both employers and employees, underestimated the power of technology and what it plays in our lives and how much it really does uh, reach to reconcile or to resist. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that's a discussion. We'll, we'll probably be discussing that a little bit more in later. Uh, like to know from the uh, from you guys in the chat, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what surprised you about workers? What surprised you employers? Or you could be a little bit more personal. What has surprised you about your employer? Uh, would be a really good question. I would love to hear uh, from you guys. So if you have a chance, write that in chat. And also, you still can just say hi to us if you just want to watch and see what's going on. Uh, let's move on a little bit. Uh, what has been a conversation you uh, or you could think of either a conversation you've had or what conversation would you have with a job seeker who has been unemployed for the last year? Uh, there's still a large segment of the unemployed uh, who've been, you know, unemployed for more than six months. So uh, what kind of conversation have you had and what kind of advice uh do you think that has been sage in this pandemic or during this time? Um, I, I will do this. You'll, you'll remember it, but I have been uh, talking to support groups across the country mm-hmm. of late. And to uh, I did a, a quick survey of regional resources and it kind of goes like this, you know, uh, here is the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, but where are the people? And, yeah. And, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. And right. Where I'm going with this is there are tons of resources out there, mm-hmm. uh, but yet there are in-person LinkedIn classes that are empty, uh, like mm-hmm. at our at our usual uh, uh, Goodwill facility. Uh, professionals in transition. Fortunately, you know we we have um, uh, folks that that come every week. Mm-hmm. But my point is, is there's lots of resources out there that, from what I can gather, are being utilized, but nowhere near to what it was like uh, pre-pandemic. And so mm-hmm. kind of the, the big question that I have is, what in the world are unemployed people 
doing. And 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 truly, if you're listening, you know, uh, comment and 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 let us know mm-hmm. because at least I can only talk about the five times that I was out of work and the, the whole reason why there was professionals in transition is like to be able to provide help and information mm-hmm. and networking. Um, and you now have so much online that I just imagine lots of people looking for a job, spending their entire day and possibly night um, online, bouncing around from one thing to another instead of getting out, if not online, if not in person, then, you know, through LinkedIn and, and meeting people, uh, making comments on LinkedIn, uh, uh, connecting with at least one new person a day mm-hmm. because traditionally, and, and Mark, I think it's higher now, but traditionally 80% of all jobs came through networking. And I'd be interested in where you think that percentage is. Now I think it's higher. And so what are people doing? I mean, that's, that's what I'm, I'm wondering. What about you? Well, I've had several conversations and even with career pros and a lot of colleagues. Um, I think there are people who are, uh, there are those who have and those that have not. And I'm going to say some things that I know are going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, For one, um, what you and I provide often is free help, right? We, We provide people to come free. I think there's a lot of people who have gone to people who have paid models and to some degree have been disappointed because those paid models prove to be uh, one paid models in many cases uh, are luxury items. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go down that road. Yes, I am. And I'm not saying that the worker doesn't deserve his wages. I'm Mm -hmm. not saying that. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't charge what they feel like they're worth. But I think there are some people who pivoted and some people who didn't. And I think those who pivoted, uh, maybe this might be, these are two separate issues. I think those who pivoted didn't get the same value that they did when they were charging or charging more. Uh, I think there were a lot of scaled down services, um, from what I understand. And I think there are people who are disappointed in some of the results. There are some people I know who gave great services and it increased, maybe they didn't cut their price, but they increased the value of what they had to Mm -hmm. guide job seekers. Having said all of that, I think a lot of people were becoming frustrated because they weren't getting those results a little bit faster. And usually when you get the coaching, there's an understood language that this could come faster if you comply with all that the person teaches that, which is great. But having said that, when people who scale down their what they offer, and this is not a critique, this is just an observation that 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 speed didn't come. So I think there's some people who are kind of disillusioned. There's some people who are just burnt out, period, and need some time. Uh, to recover uh, from all that's going on to make some decisions in life. And there's a lot of people who hadn't decided what they were going to do. And I was talking to a director of a community college, a director of career services in community college. She said that a lot of the people, a lot of her peers and people that are under who do the counseling and the advising, they don't know what to say to job seekers when they, when, or the students when they come to them, they don't know what to do. And I thought that was a very interesting paradigm because really mm-hmm. in college, in this particular case, it was a community college. Even the first couple of years of college, you really are torn between what you want to do. Uh, and But yet the, for career professionals who have access to a myriad of resources are stuck when people say they don't know what to do. And I'm not, I don't know if I can say that's a large portion. I can say that that is uh, a problem to be solved uh, amongst career professionals, because I think we run across a lot of people who say, well, we have all this open field. How will, will we ride a bike to get to the other side? Will we take a boat to the other side? They're not, they're not sure. 
And I think that's where a lot of people are. They're just not sure how to get to that other side. And I think a lot of people aren't really there. If they don't have a quick answer, they're more likely to go back and return to where they came from, maybe to another a different place. But I think there's all kinds of scenarios that are out there. And I don't know if there's just one, but I think that was one of the conversations I had. It wasn't particularly with a job seeker, but the, the the conversations I've had with job seekers is is a you know kind of a spinoff off of that. There are a lot of people who don't know what to do, and when they come, uh, they are kind of you know shedding their skin, so to speak. They're venting. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they're coming with their, uh, with life problems and life are getting in the way. So uh, there are times when I felt like a life coach, although I kind of felt like that anyway, when I did one-on-one coaching. But I think, that it, but so for career professionals overall, I think we have a much larger and wider uh um, role than we ever had before. And the one that's able to adjust to that will be out to have a good business. Uh, like I said, I don't do one-on-one coaching anymore. I do uh, some of the coaching in the, the uh, free sessions that I provide for people on my email list. You know that. In fact, I'm still supplying them with resources, uh, which I sent something out yesterday uh, uh, which I think I, I believe is a pretty valuable and robust resource uh, for those who got it. But I think doing little things like that are going to help people move in the right direction. Uh, but I think there's conversations that need to be had and and how you can unearth some of that is is start getting down to what people really want and get and get to maybe what they ultimately want. Uh, not just what they want to do right now. Um, I think a lot of people have defaulted to, well, right now I just want to say, so, well, if you're, if you're going to take a few months away from work, uh, you might as well try to think what can you go to the next level? Can you think two levels ahead? Um, and uh, that was kind of an encouraging thing to see a couple of, of people to think like that uh, in um, in the sessions I offered this summer, called them the job lab. But mm-hmm. in the job lab, we had a couple of people who did uh, make made great strides. And one was and one was employed, and one wasn't employed. And I think the one that was unemployed had been unemployed for a long time. Um, I think you know all the you've got to do, do all the little things these days. Uh, to meet with groups and to learn and 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 uh, reconfigure your professional development development if you're not doing what you want to do and if it's not working for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm sitting here listening to you, and and I think you're you're absolutely right. I think it is easy to dehumanize. Uh, the impact that COVID can have on an individual and Mm. on their life and um, on their job. Um, And when your life has been rocked with COVID, uh, you easily can take a look around take a look at the impact that it has or is having on your family mm-hmm. and then look at your job and say, you know what? It's, it's not worth it. It is just not worth it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I only mention that uh, the, the impact uh, is because I watched what happened. I, I didn't share this with you, but mm-hmm. we got home from uh, Cleveland from uh, Donna's, sister's funeral mass and um everyone was super careful matter of fact her uh, our niece was so hyper vigilant that uh, she didn't bring her uh, uh, my nephew to the uh, mass the reception or had really any any interaction with the family 
except for a few. And um, as hyper vigilant as she was, she actually wanted to cancel the uh, event after everybody had all made plans to converge to Cleveland. Do you know that Donna came home and got a call and her non-vaxxer cousin had gotten COVID? Mm. And so, so then that threw us all, I mean, Donna and I into this whole uh, COVID protocol. My point being is it's easy to watch it on television. It's, it's yeah. easy to say, oh yeah, now it's the, the number one plague that has ever hit the world. But I'm just sitting here thinking that sometimes we as uh, experts may not necessarily realize the impact that it can have on a family, number one. And then right. the other thing is, is uh, sometimes it's easy uh, in our everyday life to, to forget about the, uh, the technology, technology divide that uh, stratifies our uh, communities. Uh, point being, mm is that I know for a fact that there is a, a, a large number of people in our community that when they need to use the internet, you know, they go to the library and they do their hour and then they get knocked off and they have to start all over again. Yeah. My, my point being is what you have done for me, Mark, as we've discussed this is there is no blanket uh, answer. And, right. and, and yes, the great resignation is absolutely on target in a trend but it's kind of like a dragnet and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna butcher this but you know uh it, something like in, in each city each person has their own individual story or something mm -hmm. like that it, mm -hmm. I, I think it's the same thing i i think that uh covid when you really sit down and think about it has uh, fundamentally changed uh all of our lives collectively and has altered the way that business is going to be business um, from now on. What do you think? Well, yeah, I really think you are right on. I think, uh, I think one of the things that I, I, and I wrote an article, I think that's probably where you got it from that mm -hmm. uh, getting, giving blanket advice uh, to people is not really helping people, uh, and, and making blanket statements on LinkedIn, uh, you know, as if it was an edict, uh, it really, it surprises me. Um, I, I think even, I think even job seekers kind of, they, they, get the wrong idea that the great resignation is this fraternity or sorority that you join and that it's going to be easier now to get a job if you join this movement, which really the great resignation is more of a reaction mm -hmm. and just a reaction than something that people ought to join. Um, it, I really think that if you were, searching if you were terrible at writing a resume and interviewing and if you didn't practice and didn't uh tweak at least a little bit although there's only a certain amount of tweaking that you can possibly do at this particular time if you're not getting additional experience um you are is gonna if you put it this way if you suck before you suck now <laughs> that <laughs> That's really, that's really the reality. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I really think that that's where, uh, that's where it all lands. And I, I'm, 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 I can only be blunt about this because people are expecting that this great resignation, are you okay, Damien? Uh, <laughs> people are expecting this great resignation is going to open some doors. No, it's not going to open some doors. It may fundamentally change some people's minds. You still are competing, probably more so in some industries than others. You're comp you're, the competition just was 10 times now. 
And so literally where before we considered 100 applications the norm uh, or unusual or busy, uh, how you feel about 250 applications per job for a, a coveted job? Uh, mm-hmm. There's some jobs that are still open. I think some people are going to end up by December going to some of those uh, situations like in restaurants and fast food because they won't have too much of a choice. At least the pay is a little bit better. But ultimately, if people aren't preparing uh, themselves. And, you know, if you know my mantra, job search is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's not something, it's not a seasonal sport where there'll be a part where it will all end because of the cold weather or warm weather. It's something that's going to be continual. And that might be a summer in your season where it will be pretty cold. Mm -hmm. uh, And you have to be ready to make those shifts. And it is about whoever makes the shift um, seamlessly are the ones that are going to win. And that's an expectation that everybody could possibly have in their job search. And I uh, I think this is Simone who joins us regularly here. She says that re- resignation is a reaction. Uh, and that's all the great resignation is, is just a reaction. We're going through a period where many people are reacting. It is not something you can get on board. It's not a surfboard you can get on because there's a bigger wave. Uh, for you to ride. That's not how job search work. Job search is an individual competition. Uh, And it could be a team sport if you've built it already. But if you have found out you need to build this now, uh, you are already way behind. Uh, So there'll be a few people who'll be able to get on board. But I think you, I think the conversation needs to be built more around, okay, how can I step up my job search rather than how to get on board? And I think people are having that perspective issue there. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, I, um, I absolutely uh, agree. Um, and uh, if I could, Mark, this is just a, a question that's been uh, uh, bothering me and, and it's a, a kind of ties in loosely with what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we talk about the the need for people to have a strong digital presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always like to talk about your, your horizontal job search, that the mm-hmm. information that you communicate on your resume, uh, on your LinkedIn profile, Twitter, you name it, Facebook, is, is pretty much the same. So that when someone a human resource manager goes and 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 looks at you uh it your profile horizontally communicates the same information mm-hmm. uh, and, and and here's my question to you have have you heard um that linkedin has picked up its standards in terms of the topics that you can talk about and, and and here's what i mean now, i've been trying to do some research for another show this is another topic and i don't mm-hmm. want to take us off right but are you aware of things like uh anti-vaxxing uh the election uh, and various other things that if you talk about those regularly uh that you can get knocked off of linkedin with no explanation and it take three to four weeks going back and forth before you found out why? Are you aware of that at all? It going back and forth in as far as with whom? With LinkedIn, trying to find out why you got knocked off or suspended? I, I've i seen it discussed, but I don't know. I think they, I don't know if you can call it up the standards. I think they have, they're trying to, um, lack for a better word, they're trying to censor some of the subjects and conversations that go on, um, which is beyond the scope of this particular show. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I think people are, uh, and 
actually, this has been a longstanding. And I think just to answer a part of that question, which relates to this show, Mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, not so that we can go down a road that's very long and winding at this particular nope. point. No, nope. but uh, there are people. There's two sets of people. One is that that they've been uh, knocked off or they've been suspended because they are uh, fueling the fires of some of the politics of today. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part is is that they that the, those who are they're not suspended or they're being suspended as a reaction to some of the things that are said to them personally. So they responded and, you know, the, it's like the kid on the playground. It's not the person who, who initiated the fight It's the person that carries on the fight is the one that gets caught. And, uh, you know, I think that has gone on. Um, so, if it's, I don't think there's anything job related to being people are being suspended for. Okay, um, good. I think uh, so far, okay. I can't speak to anybody. I have been seeing it. I know that there are a couple of people who got suspended because of something that they they criticized LinkedIn for not being X, Y, and Z, which again, that's a long and winding road, uh, but. At the same time, uh, some of it should be fair game, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I think there's just a way to go about it. Okay, thank you. I and, and trust me, <laughs> I did not want to take virus way off. Down oh, the road. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just wanted to, to, to bring around the fact that, you know, if if people are embracing the great resignation, and that they are now really going to work on LinkedIn as a part of their uh, strategy, uh, especially if they're doing it kind of low key, mm -hmm. just to stick to employment related uh, issues, comments, and what have you, and uh, don't get sucked into the Facebookization of what people have talked about. Uh, when relating to uh, to uh, changes that happened at LinkedIn after Microsoft purchased it. But again, uh, another hot topic to, to stay away from. My point in this whole thing goes back to what you and I have talked about many, many weeks, uh, almost every week, is how important it is to be consistent uh, and to be vigilant in terms of uh, maintaining your online reputation as you move forward in your job search and, and not to take sudden veers right or, or left. Uh, Understood. Because... Understood. And I, I really want to express to people that LinkedIn having one itself doesn't get you a job all along. Mm -hmm. The three reasons why you want to use LinkedIn one is that, yes, you need to have an online presence uh, so that when employers look for you, they can find you. But secondly, you want to be found. And that's the part that a lot of people miss, that you want to also be found. I mean, you don't have to argue a whole lot about salary, about different things. When somebody says, you would be great for this role, you would be perfect because you've created a LinkedIn profile that's robust, that has content, and people love and people enjoy interacting with you, which mm -hmm. means that you're going to be a great coworker, you're going to be a great contributor, and that you're going to, you know, there's a lot that you can uh, give and a lot of valuable resources that you initiate uh, for the community at large to have. So therefore that makes it impressive. And then your password comes into play, especially if they seen that you do work at Microsoft, or you did work at Microsoft and Google say, now we want to get you for Twitter because we got these things coming up. Do you want to be available? And 
you know, people bypass this and nobody doesn't want me. And I think that plays into people, people, the way they position their profile. They don't think that nobody's going to want them. They're going to always be the one that needs to be fed. Well, you're the feeder too, if you're contributing and that you're making those things happen. But I think that's the second thing. And I think the third thing, most of all, is that you are, you know, in my opinion, my estimation, is that you want to be helpful and that people notice and flock to the most helpful person to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, it's interesting. I had a conversation yesterday online and I told this person how I work. Then they came back with a sales pitch. Uh, At first, they were telling me, you know, how the hell. And I said, I see that you're into sales. That really veered the conversation, shut it down, stop. You know, maybe I've gone somewhere. That, yes. And I and I wrote a post this morning saying, you, you know, if you're going to be salesy, you're not you can't be salesy and helpful. I mean, I don't mind you getting sales. And in fact, if you're going to be all about sales, cool. Just let me know and let everybody else know. I'm going to sell to you. <laughs> Valued isn't my concern. Me making my quota is going to <laughs> make a difference. So, you know, uh, uh, I, I think that's a very important. Simone says that uh, I'm only on LinkedIn, no other social media due to privacy, and receive many connection requests that are insensitive. I block them, report them. Yes continue mm-hmm. to do it i've done it too and it, it's it's uh, it, even if people just seem like they seem to be nice at first is the number one thing that's kind of bad is go to the rest restaurant and the server comes up to you to say hey i'm glad you're here um i bet you're hungry aren't you well, that's why I'm kind of sitting here in the restaurant. <laughs> it's, it's the same. On, it's kind of the same in LinkedIn. It's kind of like this. Hi, I want you know. Uh, I want to connect with you and know more about you and your business. I have a whole LinkedIn profile. <laughs> read it. <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you read it? I mean, it, it's the it's the most disingenuous thing. I've it, it's it's becoming worse. Um, and those are people shouldn't have privy to the platform that kind of way is my opinion, but there's not much we can do about it. You know, God uh, had the plague of locusts and frogs for a particular reason. Um, so therefore LinkedIn will allow, you know, these folks to continue to exist, but I digress. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Nobody deserves to be harassed on any social platform. I think you should report them, block them as quick as you can blink your eyes. So, uh, we are coming up on top of the hour, Damien, uh, as always, we have this robust discussion next week. Um, we don't have a guest yet, but in two weeks, we have Chelsea Gray. Uh, yes. the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Chelsea J, J-A-Y, is going to join us for our panel. Can't wait for that. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anything that the people should know about you have coming up? Um, just a, a decision, strategic decision that, that we made for those who are in uh, North Carolina. Uh, we were uh, within inches of going back to uh, in-person meeting, mm. uh, but with the uh, surge in uh, Delta uh, and other variations on the way, plus the the flu season, in uh, in coordination with the American Red Cross, we have made the difficult decision of not going back in uh, person for the foreseeable future, mm. uh, and again, in talking to peers across the country, virtually uh, every support group uh, has uh, continued to remain on Zoom. And that ties into the project that I'm working on, which I've mentioned before, which Mm -hmm. is uh, I'm in the process of compiling uh, information that someone has done all the work on, uh, Gerald Ruby is his name, Mm -hmm. uh, putting together uh, like a, Catherine Kennedy used to do for uh, Kennedy's, but uh, a master list of uh, support groups 
so that uh, okay. anybody can, can hit it and find a, a support group or at least some information about mm -hmm. a support group uh, in your state and in many cases in your city. So I'm not quite sure how long that's going to take, but uh, uh, when it's done uh, and updated regularly, uh, I think it'll be a, a an exciting tool for uh, for others to use who, like me, need support when you're uh, when you're out of work. Good deal. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, I have had a, a, quite a week. If you haven't read uh, the uh, Forbes article by Jack Kelly, um, you should about. Um, putting vaccination status on your LinkedIn profile and, uh, and or resume uh, was a discussion. It became a very hot discussion and it spawned some other media outlets to kind of follow suit. So that was very interesting to be a part of uh, this week um, as we discussed it. And I have it. I don't think I shared it from my profile, but if you go to Jack Kelly's uh, you'll find it there along with the uh, 10 other articles you've probably written this week. Uh, <laughs> God love Jack. Um, just be sure you join us on Wednesday for Job Seeker Nation. Uh, we have, that's going to be a special start time at 1230 Eastern. Uh, we have three guests for that particular show, Sarah Johnston, Adrian Tom, and Sarah Johnston, which they have formed a startup, which is official now, uh, which is called Job Search Secret Weapon. I think it's the whole name of it, J-S-S-W. Yeah, Job Secrets. And uh, for those who follow my podcast, especially over the years, last year, they took over my podcast. Um, and they were probably the first that did it entirely where I was not involved in whatsoever. So, uh, um, you know, I'm supporting them and, uh, supporting them however I can in these particular interests, uh, these times and one way is through the media. So, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing it that way. In the meantime, um, Damien, thank you very much for another, uh, robust, discussion hour uh, and uh, thank you uh, Simone for always chiming in in the chat love having you and uh, um, now you know Simone uh, you know will uh, not friend you if she feels like you're invading her privacy and will block you uh, just the same um, you have been listening and watching or watching the Modern Job Search Checklist. Thank you very much for joining us. We're here 1 p.m. Eastern every single Friday. Well, just about every Friday. We'll probably take a break during the holidays. But we want you to feel free to engage our YouTube page uh, and also find us here on LinkedIn individually. Damian Burkle, you definitely want to follow him. You can follow me. Of course, if you like. If you don't, oh well. Uh, <laughs> we're signing off right now. Uh, be sure you check out the, the replay if you just caught us late. Uh, we definitely want to be helpful to you. Thank you again for the smiley face, Mo. Uh, you all have a great day and a great weekend. We'll see you here next week.